Okay, so I guess we're going to move on to our long-range strategic planning report. So now, national pres past national president and implementation team member Chris Nelson is here with a very special long-range strategic planning presentation. So please, welcome my good friend, and I am so happy she's able to be here with us at this convention. Please welcome Chris to the stage. Good morning. By 2019, the American Legion Auxiliary's million members will be making a difference for veterans and, and their families in every neighborhood. Powerful words, the vision of our centennial plan, the framework of our five goals, the most important thing we are doing. The ultimate success of, the plan, of this plan is not at national headquarters. The future of the American Legion Auxiliary will be strong if we every one of us commit to be part of this plan. We, every one of us, must be willing to accept change and actively begin to do whatever we as an individual, unit, or department can do to implement the strategies of these critical five goals adopted by the NEC. Each of you has a copy of the plan. Please find it, and I'll wait for you for a minute, and we're gonna read these goals together. Okay, goal number five. With the American Legion, raise awareness to build brand loyalty. Goal number four, strengthen departments and units. Goal number three, develop leadership at all levels. Goal number two, create a culture of goodwill. And goal number one, attain a million members. Accepting change and acting on these five goals is essential to the future and survival of the American Legion Auxiliary. It's our mission of serving our country's veterans, military, and families in every neighborhood. The American Legion has also recognized the need for a strategic plan, and they have also implemented a five-year plan. Both organizations are exploring ways to strengthen our mission and capacity to serve our nation's heroes, our country's veterans. You have all done some amazing things since the introduction of this plan at last year's convention. You have invested in the future of the American Legion Auxiliary by resourcing phase one of the centennial plan, not only financially, but also by giving your time and energy to assure the plan's success. Thank you. Thank you all for what you have done and what you are continuing to do. You are creating results. You are assuring the future of the American Legion Auxiliary. You are committed to our mission of serving veterans, military, and their families for generations to come. This is not my plan. This is not any national president's plan. This is not national headquarters plan. This is our plan. And together we can, we can create results that will lead to the success of the organization at every level. Each of you have a few tools that you can use to spread the word and involve members at, at your unit and at your community. You should all have a copy of the May issue of the magazine. The cover of this issue shows the vision of the five goals of the plan. Pages 38 and 39 have detailed information on the five goals of the plan. So take that and get it out in the neighborhoods. Use it in your units. Use it as individuals to, to um, support our plan. You also have a t-shirt, and I see a lot of you have it on. So thank you for that. If you continue to wear this when you get home in your community, it's an easy way to spread our message. It may prompt community members to ask, what is this all about? And you will, it will give you the opportunity to tell them and to ask them to join you. So what have we been doing this year? Earlier I stated that the Centennial Plan is the most important thing we are doing. And everything we do must center around this plan. So as we finish the first year of our five-year plan, let's remember that we have five goals and 26 strategies that are of all equal importance and all vital to the success of the plan. Here are just a few I'd like to highlight. There were so many to choose from that I didn't think Jana would let me take the rest of the convention. <laughs> 
Goal five with the American Legion, raise awareness and build brand loyalty. This team has created multiple awareness, branding, and recognition opportunities for internal and external audiences, including creating a resource expo at the Department Leadership National Conference as a hand-on de demonstration of the many ALA-branded resources available to departments, and adding branded leadership awards to public relations plan of action to recognize individuals or teams who acts as ambassador of the ALA at ALA Rockstars to recognize individuals, units, and departments for excelling and promoting our brand. Goal four, strengthen departments and units. This team has created monetary incentive awards for departments who have created and began implementation of their department plans. To date, over $8,000 has been awarded to departments. Information on how to apply for these incentives is on the ALA website in the awards section and attendees at the breakout session yesterday received the tools to assist departments in continuing and succeeding with their plans. Will your department be listed in the 2016 convention? Yes. All right. Goal three, develop leadership at all levels. This team has been diligently working hard on documenting our leadership selection process to be included in the next revision of the Department Operations Guide. Goal two, create an internal culture of goodwill. The first steps this team has undertaken is creating a definition of goodwill for the organization. Goodwill is a kind, helpful, and positive attitude towards others. Goodwill involves more than members working together in a collaborative effort to support the ALA mission. Through friendly dispositions, willingness to engage and support each other, and goal one, attain a million members. It is, it is important to remember that governing board of the auxiliary, the NEC, established this goal. It is also vitally important that we do not just concentrate on goal number one. If we are successful with goals two, three, four, and five, we will easily attain goal number one. Here is a neat accomplishment that has recently come from the goal number one team. They recently added a new strategy to achieve membership that represents the diversity of the United States military. They're already up and running to make this goal a success, so, so stay tuned, everyone. For some team, teams, it is easier to see the impact of their work than it is others, but even the smallest changes are impacting our culture. The simple fact is we've agreed on five goals to accomplish, and for a group this size, that's an uh, accomplishment in itself. To give you an example of what I mean, all of the department secretaries were called to national headquarters for a training in January. This is the first time this has happened and this training had some impact on each of our five goals. You can see how a training would strengthen departments. It was an opportunity for some learning about membership database and answering questions about the ALA emblem. So that covers three of our five goals, but what about the other two? We have not always been good about recognizing the vital role of our department secretaries and the smooth function that they play in our departments. There is a wide disparity in their work situations. Some are volunteers working out of their home and others manage a staff of four or five. All of these women bear a heavy responsibility for the smooth functioning of our departments and prior to the operations guide, they often had to figure this out on their own. <coughs> Excuse me. By recognizing the need to provide information and training to department secretaries, we are building an organization leadership team. When we clarify roles and provide appropriate training, we minimize the drama and set the stage for success. There are two important things I hope you will take away from this presentation. First, kudos to each of you for resourcing this plan, both through time and finances. The majority of the financial resources this year were used for an unbiased professional assessment of the American Legion Auxiliary's capacity to deliver our mission at all levels of the organization. This is also known as an organiza organizational effectiveness assessment, and in a minute I will be introducing the people that will be presenting these findings. There were 8,500 members who participated in this assessment through 8,300 online surveys, seven focus groups, 135 personal interviews, if you were one of those people, will you please stand and be recognized? 
great job. Thank you all. <clears throat>
There isn't a single person at either national convention who doesn't share the bond to actively support the veteran communities through helpfulness or selflessness. So, with such great personal resolve and individual passion to serve our veterans and their families, why aren't more women feeling our passion and joining? Well, today, we'll find some answers and hear recommendations that can help solve some of the issues. As Chris told you, we started several years ago looking at the hard facts. Membership was declining and at a pace that would not sustain the organization. We assumed our mission, values, and programs weren't the issue. We surmised that we might have an awareness problem. So, we uh, tested our awareness and found that, yes, in fact, we were not well known. Even to the point that people within the military didn't know much about us. Our next step was to conduct an ad campaign to see if we could increase or bolster that awareness. Now, there were three very important findings from that ad campaign that's really led us to where we are today. First, yes, we could increase positive awareness with advertising. Second, and I think maybe one of the most important, is what we found that people, when they found that people knew more about us, they liked what they heard. Instead, they would actually be willing to consider joining us in some capacity to help with our mission. And third, we also found out that the organization didn't have the processes, infrastructure, or policies in place to bring in a new variety of potential members. This was an organizational issue, not an issue with the resolve or passion or dedication that each and every one of you has as an individual member for the American Legion Auxiliary. At the same time, the American Legion Auxiliary was in the midst of developing the five-year centennial strategic plan. It became abundantly clear with the learnings from the awareness campaign and the strategies being developed for the five-year centennial plan that the organization should step back and take a look at the organization itself. Three of the five goals resolved around the internal organization, goal four strengthen departments and units. Goal three, develop leadership at all levels. Goal two, create an internal culture of goodwill. So now the burning question became, do we have the organizational capacity to meet our mission and to fulfill the strategic plan? Or said in another way, do we have an adequate system in place that will allow us to continue serving veterans, military, and their families for the next generation? I think we all firmly believe our membership is totally committed to our mission of service, not self. We know we have programs in place that provide critical and necessary support to veterans and their families. But is the organization up to the call? While it seems like we've already made a lot of changes in the organization over the last 95 years, perhaps we haven't made enough changes that are critical that are either flexible enough or relevant enough to potential new members. So maybe we should take a look at the changes our fellow members, all of you, have already suggested and be open to what we find. So that brings us to today's report, an introspective and quite frankly very positive report on the American Legion Auxiliary and the respondents and the authors of this report are you, some 8,000 of you. This is your answer to the question, do we have the organizational capacity to fulfill our mission? So let me now introduce you to those who asked the questions, gathered your answers, and wrote the report. The firm of Johnson Gross Nickel, or JGA, was hired to conduct this study. For more than 20 years, Johnson Gross Nickel and Associates has taken an authentic, strategic approach to providing nonprofit consulting services to large, complex, nonprofit organizations across the United States. Sounds just like you. The JGEA senior team of consultants have more than 100 years of combined experience 
working with nonprofit organizations and foundations. Here today, representing JGA, and the senior member of the JGA team is Angela White. It just so happens that Angela is an ALA member. <laughs> Eligible through her father, now deceased Harold White, who fought in World War II and was a legionnaire for all of his life. Angela grew up attending functions at the American Legion Post in her small town in central Illinois. Please welcome Angela White. Thanks, Lee. Good morning, everyone. I'm so pleased to be here. I did come from my home state, the Department of Illinois, but now I'm a proud member in the department, now a proud member in the Department of Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> Growing up as a young child, I mostly remember attending fish fries at our American Legion on Friday nights, which was a big deal in my town. And um, so who would think that um, uh, just a few years later, I'd have the honor of leading our team at JGA to work for you, the American Legion Auxiliary. And I just want to introduce my teammates who are here with me today. Tim Ardillo and Lee Ernst. You will recognize them. Many of you who stood up were either in a focus group or an interview with Lee, Tim, or myself as we had the privilege of canvassing the country to talk to, as Tom said and as Chris said, those 8,500 respondents either online or in person or via the focus groups. So, we have an important task to do today, and I'm going to ask your patience because we're going to take a little bit of time to do this. I want to walk you through what we heard from those nearly 8,500 respondents. So this report, of course, does come through the lens of nonprofit best practice, as Tom described our work and our company. But in essence, I'm going to share with you today what we heard from you from that very strong representation of nearly 8,500 people. So, to get started, <coughs> we know that you're at a crossroads, and we understand how important your work is in the Centennial Plan. Thus, the goal of today and the goal of this assessment is to give you some context on what you told us and to set the stage for your continued success in implementing the plan. We understand that at some point in the future after convention, the full report of our work will be made available to you. It's about a 40-page detailed report, and so I want to cover that today in a series of slides, but not, of course, read to you word for word those 40 pages. But we do understand that will be available to you later. So as we heard this morning, these wonderful examples of how you implement your mission, we know that the Centennial Plan will position you for that next century, will help you rethink how you deliver your message and mission and how you invest in your future, and will focus on turning around those declining membership trends by focusing on new ways to engage your members. Also that, by the 2019-2020 year, you will have a million members making a difference for veterans and their families in every neighborhood. Now, we heard that goal loud and clear in our work, making a difference for veterans. So what did we ask in this assessment? Well, for us, we had two key areas of inquiry. Are you able to deliver your mission? And what is your ability to achieve the goals in the Centennial Plan? We asked, how do your key constituents, your members, and some non-members and some former members, how do you view the capacity of the organization to deliver your mission? What's the interest and commitment to your mission and the plans for the future? And will you be able to achieve success in implementing the Centennial Plan? And as Tom said, this is about the organization's effectiveness to deliver the plan. 
So we talk to both internal and external audiences. As you've heard, we actually had feedback from 8,849 of you, which is terrific. 135 in-person or telephone interviews that Lee, Tim, and I conducted. Seven focus groups that we facilitated comprised of 54 people and an electronic assessment tool that many of you took advantage of with over 8,300 respondents. Now, I just want to make a note that when we started down this path, we were hoping and budgeting for about a 7% response rate, which is average. But we know, ladies, you're not average. And you blew it out of the water with a 12% response rate. And as we understand from staff, the number of folks responding, number of you responding to this report is the largest response you've ever had in any call out for feedback. Okay. So, terrific. So, we certainly want to thank all of you who participated and our headquarters staff, especially Stephanie, Carly, and Julie who without them this report would not be delivered today because they scheduled all of those 135 in-person and phone interviews across the country as well as those focus groups. So a heartfelt thanks to your staff who made this report possible. Yeah, that's right. They're smiling that we're done, I think. So, um, so I want you to take away one thing from today, and that is this message we heard consistently and loudly throughout the process of gathering this feedback. That you are viewed as a very committed group of women who believe in the mission of the auxiliary and who are passionate about service to veterans, to the military, and to their families. That's the foundation for the feedback I'm going to share with you today. So how does our report lay out? What are the sections? So I'm going to share with you the observations around the Centennial Plan 5 goals. I'm going to share with you some general observations. I'm going to give you some input from our discussions. We have included the responses from the electronic assessment. And we promised confidentiality in these interviews. And so the report shows the tenor of the comments we heard, but without attributing those to any one person. So are you ready? Let's dive in. Goal one, attain a million members. So what the respondents told us about goal one is that currently it focuses on quantity versus quality. The perception is the focus is on recruitment, not retention, and that it's not mission focused enough, and that we're not aligning ourselves with member interests. Now, one of the things that you've seen through and through is that we're starting to refer to the goals in reverse order, five, four, three, two, one, because if we do two through five, we'll achieve one. And I think that is very consistent with the feedback we heard in this assessment we heard that the top drivers of the auxiliary experience are veteran and community service and participating in a leadership role. You see in this um, chart excerpt from the electronic assessment that, that veteran serving activities and community service volunteer op opportunities are the drivers of membership and why women want to be engaged and involved. So we heard from our respondents that we put too much focus on meeting structure, that we're not putting enough focus in our meetings on program engagement and impact. Those should be more important than meeting attendance and parliamentary procedure. So if you remember the drivers, how do, how do the meetings match the drivers to grow membership? We also heard the need to explore alternative pathways to service. How do we de-emphasize the unit meeting requirement and how do we embrace membership at all levels of engagement? However, I might be able to be engaged today 
and it might not be in my regular unit meeting attendance. We also heard the need to simplify the membership metrics, all under goal one here that the multiple tracking periods of membership goals are confusing, membership renewal, fiscal year, and leadership terms are different, and that right now, we heard, it seems demotivating if you exceed your membership goal for the year because that just puts more pressure on membership for the next year. Now, we know that, yeah. We know that's currently being addressed in the membership plan, but we did hear that loud and clear. Now, interestingly enough, and overwhelmingly, we heard those previous items might have been obstacles to membership, but membership dues are not. The membership pricing structure is not a barrier to acquiring or retaining members, and in fact, 94% said your dues are either moderate low or very low. So you're not pricing yourself out of the market, far from it. We also heard about youth involvement. We heard about Girls State, Girls Nation, the junior activities, and we heard concern that they are not serving as a feeder to the auxiliary, but they should. And the biggest response to that question of why was that we need a different model of engagement for our youth. I'm going to move through the goals, and I'm going to move to goal two, creating an in internal culture of goodwill. And as I make this move into goal two, I want to say that I know this is a sensitive issue, and it's an important issue, and so I'm going to address it head on. We heard that creating a culture of goodwill is at a crisis point for you as the auxiliary. We heard that it is the biggest obstacle to implementing your centennial plan. And we heard about a prevalent and widespread culture of unkindness. Now, I don't say these words lightly, and I'm certain that it's not what you would like to hear. However, remember what I said about this report being grounded in women who are passionate about serving veterans. These comments were consistent across our respondents, yet I also know they were made in a spirit of wanting the auxiliary to thrive and to succeed. You can see in this grid from the electronic survey, there are several areas that, that respondents rated as subpar, and the culture within the auxiliary was in that subpar quadrant. So what did we hear? We heard three main causes for a lack of goodwill. We heard about moving up the leadership ladder at all costs. We heard about this culture of the importance of moving up the leadership ladder, which takes away from the focus on mission. We heard about an unwelcoming atmosphere at unit meetings whereby we certainly want and need new members, but how are those new members welcomed? How are they invited to continue to be involved? How are their new ideas welcomed? And thirdly, we heard a lot about needing to maintain power and control by withholding information. You might think about this as the opposite of mentorship. So instead of my sharing how my program was run and how my program was successful with you so that you could take it over and be even more successful, there seems to be a culture of holding back so that the next person is not more successful. So as I said, these are not things that maybe are happy to hear this morning, but we need to hear them. And we'll talk more about culture of goodwill when we move into recommendations. But as I said, it was seen as the biggest obstacle to success of the entire plan. Let's move to goal three, developing leaders at all levels. So we heard a few things about the challenges of developing leaders at all levels. One is that the annual terms lead to a lack of continuity. So that's difficult. You just get your feet under you as a leader and your term is up. 
We also heard a lot about the lack of open and competitive elections at both the national and department levels. We heard the need for broader candidate screening at a minimum. And we heard about a void in unit and department level leadership training, which I'll speak more about in a few moments. Now we know your national governance is on a path to improvement in terms of continuity as you move to two year terms and you've created the executive committee to the NEC for consistency and decision making and we applaud those efforts. That's a part of what we heard clearly in the report. We also heard about a lack of diversity at leadership levels and also throughout membership. That your membership is not reflective of our US veteran population as this slide shows. And the need to diversify membership as well as grow in numbers. Let's look at the responses to goal four, strengthening the departments and units. So what we heard is the units are where it's at. Okay? We heard that the key to successful implementation of the plan is through the units. We heard that the plan will fail without unit level engagement, yet the units lack communication and training that they need for stronger engagement. We also heard about communication challenges. There seems to be a sense of overwhelming communication from departments to units too much. The reports are too tedious and burdensome. There's a lack of an incentive to submit your reports, especially if you're missing your goals. And we heard that it takes about three years for a national level decision to filter down and be implemented at the unit level. If that's true, we don't have time to implement the plan, right? So when we think about training, we heard that conferences are poorly attended and poorly represented and poorly presented as well, that the training curriculum fails to incorporate these four areas that came from our respondents. We need more training on generational differences, how to work together across the generations. We need more training on operations and operational management. We need training on national trends in service and how are we keeping up with those trends. And we need training on interpersonal challenges and how to work together. All right. So let's move to goal five, building brand loyalty with the American Legion. We heard and Tom addressed in his remarks the continued need for brand identity. Your brand is tied to the success of the American Legion. You're impacted by the demographics of the Legionnaires. And we heard that you need increased awareness of the auxiliary within military members. We also heard that your messaging lacks focus. Several respondents in person and many, many across the electronic surveys said, we really need to streamline to two to three major program areas and ensure our programs are relevant and mission driven. So in addition to that brief overview of the respondents' perceptions of the goals, we have some general observations to share, and then I'll move into the recommendations. So under general observations, the centennial plan itself is fairly overwhelming with more than 150 initiatives. The implementation plan is complex. It does conflict, perhaps, with other strategic plans in the departments and the units. And it's not aligned with many of your existing committee structures. When we look at national headquarters staffing, you have 35 staff members to serve approximately 750,000 members. So we ask, are you able to meet membership needs? Are you able to implement a very complex centennial plan? Are you able to administer 11 national programs 
and scholarships with a staff of that number. We also noted that technology is not adequate. We can't access information consistently at department and unit levels, and we need the effective use of a technology platform to support membership. So let's take a look at what we recommend. Now again, as Tom said, this is an outside external assessment. And these are our recommendations based on our work as a nonprofit consulting firm, what we learned through the respondents and our view of nonprofit best practices. I'm going to present you the recommendations and that's what they are. They have not been acted upon, nor will they today. These are our recommendations to you that will then move to the implementation committee. So, we believe that these recommendations will position you to deliver your mission and to achieve the goals of the Centennial Plan. As I said, these recommendations are based on the synthesis of feedback from those nearly 8,500 respondents and our nonprofit best practices. First recommendation goes right to Goodwill. As we said, it was cited as the number one obstacle for, uh, for implementing the goals in the Centennial Plan. We need to stay mission focused at meetings. Mission for you is where it's at. We need to stay mission focused at meetings. We recommend that you establish a fair leadership selection or election process that is understood and transparent to all membership. We recommend that you create a hospitality chair at all levels throughout the auxiliary to put an emphasis on that welcoming, hospitable environment. We recommend that you train members on how to collaborate together. Under membership programs and meeting structure, again, emphasize mission at your meetings. That's what drives membership, that's what drives attendance at your meetings. Create meeting guidelines that encourage engagement over process and procedure. Embrace all members, members who want to volunteer and lead, members who pay their dues but don't have time to volunteer, and members who reflect the diversity of our veterans. Focus on membership recruitment and retention. Simplify your reporting by aligning your renewal year and your fiscal year. Focus a national... There you go. Focus a national staffing unit on membership recruitment and retention to work directly with units and departments. Create an active online membership presence. Create tools for online membership. Sign up, renewal, and communication. Engage members on social media. Appropriately support the e-unit movement. Now, I don't say this in a trendy way. People want to engage in all different ways across the auxiliary. And this is an area where you're lacking and not able to offer those engagement tools in the online presence to those who want them. We also recommend that you simplify. Conduct a review to streamline your programs. And again, be ruthlessly mission focused. If you've heard one thing from me today, I think it's mission focused. We recommend that you leverage Girls State and Girls Nation. This is not only a tremendous program. One of my colleagues at JGA was her delegate to Girls State in Indiana, and it was more than just a couple years ago, and she still t was telling us in this work how meaningful that was to her. So a terrific program, also a feeder for you for future members. Create an alumni association for those girls so that as they become young women and adults, they have a way to stay connected and offer a dual membership track 
in the auxiliary strengthen the junior activities program and its recruiting. We also recommend that you examine your dues structure. Your dues, as you saw, 94% of the respondents viewed them as moderate or low. Could you have a greater impact with more dues revenue? What dues level will your membership bear? We recommend that you review your dues structure. That's all under membership. Let's talk about leadership structure. We recommend that you address the selection and election process of your leaders. We recommend that you move to a two year or more term for your leaders and we're talking both at the department and national level. We also recommend that you address the secretary title to make that title be more reflective as a headquarters executive, whether in the department or national, not being implied as an administrative clerk. It's an old term, and it probably does not convey the role of the secretaries today. Grow new leaders through mentorship. It's the opposite of what I talked about in the lack of goodwill. Eliminate my year, my pin, my theme, and focus on the centennial plan as the theme. Foster a collaborative environment of leadership transition, not an environment where I don't want your year to be as successful as mine or your program to be as successful as mine. Create that collaborative leadership transition. Recommendation number four under departments and unit training. Conduct a professional review of your training and the delivery effectiveness of the training. Focus on district and countywide training. Have consistent new leader training. And if we're not turning our leaders over so quickly, that will be more manageable. Consider creating a national staffing training team for that consistent professional delivery of training, and certainly create a webinar training system to get to those folks who want to be a part of training but can't be there in person. <laughs> Number five, public awareness and brand identity. Repair your focus on mission and your culture of goodwill before you enter into another public awareness campaign. Now, in this recommendation, we're not saying hide your light under a bushel, but we are saying that you have to have the environment ready when you welcome those new members. So welcoming me and then losing me does not help. So focus on mission and culture of goodwill first. Get our internal house in order. Communicate the relevancy and the impact of the Legion and the Auxiliary. How are you relevant today? All we had to do was listen to the morning presentations to feel that again, right? How are you relevant today and what is your impact? Jointly promote within the military branches the Legion and the Auxiliary. And again, don't forget to leverage social media and the internet. When I Google veteran services, I want to see the auxiliary. Recommendation six. Ensure that you have the sufficient resources for the implementation of this plan today and in the future. So if not us, who, and if not now, when, are very important questions. So ensure that you resource as you move through the plan and as you consider these recommendations, there have to be resources there to implement them. Examine your national staffing and funding levels. Continue to simplify. That might be my second word of the morning after mission. Continue to simplify implementation so that we're all on the same team. You recited those goals earlier. Those are the goals across every unit, every department. Focus on those departments and units and streamline all of your reporting 
to filter up and align with the Centennial Plan. As I conclude this morning, Tim Lee and I really believe now is the time for you to be bold, to embrace change, to be relevant, to fulfill your mission, and to most importantly, support our veterans and our families. That's what it's about. Thank you. That's what it's about, and that's why you had 8,500 respondents to this needs assessment. And that's why you're here today, very attentively listening and taking all of this in, so that you can look internally at the auxiliary and at your organizational structure and understand how to better position yourself to achieve the goals of the plan, not for the sake of the plan, but for the sake of those who serve. Thank you very much.